Hello, in this presentation, we will record the receipt of payment and making of a deposit into our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how this same information might be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. We're going to take a quick look at how this might be entered into QuickBooks and then jump over into our Excel worksheet and put this information into our Excel worksheet. If you would like more information about the QuickBooks Pro, take a look at our comprehensive course in the link below. We've seen both of these items before, meaning we've seen the receipt of payment and making deposit. We're going to try to do them both at the same time so we can see them linked together in this presentation. However, we're going to go a little bit faster since we have seen both of the items before. Within QuickBooks, the first item that we're going to look at is the receipt of payment. The assumption here being that we have already issued an invoice in the past for, in our case, a guitar that we shipped out. And we are now receiving the payment in the mail for that guitar that was shipped out. We're going to receive the payment. And then, of course, at the end of the day, we're going to take that payment, probably a check, and deposit it into the bank and use the record deposit in the QuickBooks system in order to record that transaction. If we look at the receive payment item then, all we need to do is put the Anderson, in this case the customer, and QuickBooks will say, hey, we got a couple invoices for Anderson, or one in this case. Is that the one you want? We're going to say yes, because we have a check that we have received in the mail for that $430.50 related to that invoice. And we're going to write that it's a check, and that's all we need to do. And QuickBooks will then perform the journal entry, which will decrease accounts receivable. This will decrease the amount owed to us, having the fact that a customer has paid us. And it will record the cash, but not into the cash account, general cash account, or checking account, but into an undeposited fund account. That's kind of the new step, or the different step, than we see in theory that we will have to deal with, and we'll see how to deal with it when we record this in Excel. Then we're going to have another receive payment. So same item, we were same assumption. We had an invoice prior, we're receiving a payment in the mail. And we're going to say this was for Eric Music. So another receive payment. And this is uh, once we put in the, the name of the customer, QuickBooks says, is this the right invoice? And we're going to say that's the one we got $525 this once again decreasing accounts receivable increasing cash but a specific cash account that of undeposited funds and then we're going to take those deposits and go and record them into the bank and that would coincide with us actually going to the bank and depositing the checks so when we do that we're going to make this deposit and QuickBooks will say, hey, you got two checks that we think are outstanding right now. Are those the ones you want to deposit? Or which ones would you like to deposit? We would then check them off. And the bank would then, uh, QuickBooks would then deposit both of them and combine them together so that when we reconcile the bank, they will be combined and uh, we'll be able to check them off at the same point when we reconcile. That's the process within QuickBooks. We're going to go through now and record that in Excel. Here we we are now going to record those two receipts of payment and then deposit into the checking account of those two receipts payments. We're going to record it in this area over here. Note that all prior journal entries have been hidden, so they're just in the side here, just hidden so that uh, we can work with information that's right next to what we're working with and be uh, have as much on the same screen as we can. So. First thing we're going to say is that Anderson Guitars, a customer, gave us a payment, received a payment in the mail of $430.50. First question, is cash affected? We're going to say that yes, it is. However, it's not the checking account that we got. It's the undeposited funds. We're going to put this into undeposited funds uh, until we make the deposit. So we got a check. It's going to increase undeposited funds. It is a asset account with a debit balance, and therefore, to make it go up, we will do the same thing to it which is another debit. So I'm going to copy this account. I'm going to put that on top in Q5, right click and paste 123. The date's going to be 128 and the amount that we received in the mail is $430.50. 0 0.5, it will round here to 431 because we're rounding off the cents uh, in this problem just to make it look a little bit cleaner. 
And then we're going to have a credit of that same amount. So I'm going to put negative of that number. Or we could just put a negative 431. But I'm going to put negative of that number. That's kind of like our plug formula. And the other side is going to go to the receivable, meaning this person, uh, Anderson Guitars in this case, owed us money represented in this number. That number then needs to go down because we now have received payment. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So we're going to copy the receivable, right click and copy the receivable. Put that in cell Q6, right click and paste 123. Then we're going to go to the Home tab, Alignment Group, and increase the indentation. And now we have journalized the journal entry into the general journal. And we will now post that to the general ledger. In order to do that, we're going to first freeze the panes. We're going to put our cursor in AJ1. We're going to go to the View tab up top. And go to the, to the Windows group. Freeze panes. And freeze the panes. Then we're going to go and record this. Now it's down here. It's the third to last asset. It will be the third to last asset on the general ledger as well. We're going to scroll to the right till we see that undeposited funds. I'm going to scroll down. There it is. We can't see them both on the same screen right now. We could try to make it a little bit smaller. I'm at 120. I'm going to bring it go down to say 90. And that's really as far down as I want to go. So it's right there. And so I'm going to have to scroll up just a little bit to get that. So we are in cell AU29. We're going to select equals and then scroll up just a bit and point to that 431 in R5 and enter. I'm going to go back up to 120%. 120%. Now if that was difficult to maneuver around, you could just type in equals R5. And it should pick that up as long as we are in the same area in the worksheet. That puts 431 into undeposited funds. If we scroll back over to the trial balance, we see that as well uh, in the undeposited funds here. So here it is in the undeposited funds. I had to make a bit of an adjustment there. But it's back there. Your worksheet should be working fine. And there's the 431. If we scroll down, we'll be out of balance by the 431 until we record the other side. No effect on net income. We'll then go to the other side. That's going to be in accounts receivable, our second account on the trial balance, and therefore our second account on the general ledger. Scrolling over to the right, we see the accounts receivable. We're going to scroll down to the next uh, amount, the next area, which is going to be AR16. AR16 equals, we're going to point to that 431. That's going to bring this debit balance down because we did the opposite thing to it, crediting it to 1740 that same 1740 will be on the trial balance and it will put us back in balance no effect on net income none of these accounts were in the dark blue income statement accounts next thing we need to do is the fact that we recorded something to the accounts receivable means that we have the detail of who owes us that money over here i mean we have the detail of when that money uh, was owed or paid off within the accounts receivable general ledger. But we also want to know who owes us that money. We need to go to the subsidiary ledger and mark off specifically that this customer, Anderson Guitars, no longer owes us that $41, uh, $431. So we're going to scroll to the right and we're basically going to post the same amount like we did to the GL here to the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger similar to a GL or in essence a GL that is in order by customer rather than just by uh, a date. So it's going to be way over here in CR. So we're in, in the CR and CS columns. We're looking for Anderson. There's Anderson right there. And we're going to uh, debit the amount for four. Actually, we're going to credit the amount because we're taking away this one here for the 431. So that's going to be equals this credit. That's going to bring the balance down to zero. Adding up all of them then, if we sum them all up, we get to this 1740 That should be the amount in the GL as well as the amount on the trial balance, 1740 Scrolling back to check that out. We're just scrolling all the way to the left. And scrolling down, we see the 1740 there. That looks correct. If we look at the trial balance, we see the 1740 there as well. 
so we're all tied out and it looks correct we're going to do the same process for another person that gave us a payment we, we received another check in the mail it's been a good day also on the 128 and that was from uh, eric music and we got a check for 525 same journal entry we're going to say is cash affected yes but not the checking account we're going to put it first into the undeposited funds it has an asset we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case is a debit so we're going to copy that put that in un the top undeposited funds right click paste one two three and the amount will be 525 we will then credit something in S9 for 525. I'm going to use the plug formula of negative of that number and enter. So there's the credit. And the credit will then go to the receivable. People owed us money. People now paid us off that money. Therefore, the amount owed needs to go down. That's a debit. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So we will copy the receivable, put that in Q9, right click, Paste one, two, three. I'm gonna format this by going to the home tab, alignment group, and increase the indentation. Then we'll post this. So this is the undeposited funds here. Undeposited funds is the third to last account on the trial balance, and therefore the third to last account on the general ledger. We're gonna scroll over till we find that third to last account of the assets on the general ledger. Scrolling down, it's gonna be down here there it is and so i'm not going to uh, decrease the size i'm going to have to scroll up it looks like either way so we are in au30 we're going to say equals and then i'm just going to scroll up a little bit till i see that journal entry it's the last journal entry we want to pick up that number in r8 equals or enter and there it is and if, if that scrolling around is is difficult then just uh, for a while you can put uh, equals r8 and that'll use the formula you could hard code it in there too, but if you do so and you make a, a problem, it's much more difficult to find it. And I highly recommend you using formulas and working on them as you as you go through this. That's helpful for more than just accounting. So then we're going to go to the left and scroll back. If we go down, we see that uh, we're out of balance by 525 till we record the other side. And we see that 956 in undeposited funds. Now we're going to record the accounts receivable second account on the trial balance second account on the general ledger scrolling over to that second account we're going to go to the credit side of it we will be in column ar row 17 cell ar 17 equals and pointing to that 525 brings the balance of 1740 down by 525 to 1215 we should also see that 1,215 right here in AK6. Scrolling down, we see that we are also back in balance. No effect on net income note, even though we are receiving cash, because there's no effect on these blue accounts for one reason, and there's no effect on those blue accounts because we already received the revenue in the past recording the revenue when we completed the work, when, in essence, the invoice went out. So that's going to be the deposits. Now we have this amount in undeposited funds. We've got this here in undeposited funds, which we then need to go to the bank and deposit. So we're going to take it out of undeposited funds and put it into the bank. When that happens, grouping them together, not putting them into the bank at 431 and 528, but at the grouped amount of 956. And that will help us to match out the bank balances when with the bank statement to the book balances uh, when we do the bank reconciliation. So in this case, we're going to say the checking account is going to go up. We're going to put that deposit into the checking account. It has a debit balance. We are going to increase it by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So we'll copy the checking. We're going to put that on top in Q11, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount, uh, the date is 128. And the amount is that 956, 956. And if we look at the decimals, just to make the rounding right, it's 956.50. So that, you know, I'll put 956.50, which will, now let's keep it at 956. 
we probably should have used pennies, but that's okay. We'll keep it at 956. And then we're going to credit something for the same amount. And there we have that. Now we just need to know what that credit is going to be. And that's going to be the undeposited funds. So we have the undeposited funds here. That needs to go down to zero. It's a debit balance account. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So we'll copy the undeposited funds. We'll put that on the bottom in cell Q12. Right click and paste. One, two, three. We're then going to format that. Home tab. Alignment. Increase the indentation. And there we have it. We have journalized the journal entry in the general journal. We will now post that, the process of posting, to the general ledger. Uh, before we do that, note that this account here, we never uh, adjusted the subsidiary ledger. <laughs> uh, just, and so let me highlight that. We uh, uh, decreased the accounts receivable. We had not adjusted the subsidiary ledger for the fact that the customer, in this case, was Smith uh, Eric Music no longer owes us that money so let's do that now i'm going to go all the way to the right to find that subsidiary ledger make sure we pick that up otherwise we'll be calling eric music saying that you owe us 525 when in actuality they have already paid it so we're going to scroll back here so here it is we've got uh, eric music there's the 525 note our number here wouldn't match it doesn't match right now what's on the trial balance because we had not picked up this this is also something that would be automated in accounting systems if we put a customer in each time we deal with the accounts receivable account. So in cell CW15, we're just going to say that that equals point to that 525, bringing this balance back to zero. If we were to add up all of them, and note all we did was just record the same thing. This is in essence like a tri another general ledger, just recording the same detail by customer. Now we're at 1,215. That should be the amount on the general ledger. 1,215. I'm going to scroll left. 1,215, 1,215 on the general ledger. And we're scrolling all the way till we see that amount on the general ledger. 1,215 there. So that's in accounts receivable. And we're going to see it on the trial balance as well. 1,215. Okay, so we've completed that. So I'm going to go ahead and make that back to its normal color. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and post these out. We have undeposited funds. That remembers the third to last asset account. And well, let's post the top first. We got the checking account, which is our favorite first account. So here we have the checking account. We'll scroll down to the checking account, new item in the checking account in AM18, and say that that equals point to that 956. Increase in the checking account by 956 going to 126.86. We'll then post the undeposited funds, which is the third to last account, which that 956 is in. We expect it to go to zero after this. Scrolling to the right and scrolling down, we see the undeposited funds right there. We're going to go to the last cell. So we're going to be in the credit side and we want to record this part. So I'm going to have to scroll up just a tad. So we're in AV31 equals scrolling up just a bit to pick that number up in S12 and enter. And that brought the balance down to one. That's a rounding difference. So I'm going to be okay with that. We're in essence at zero. And so we have the 951. If we scroll back over, then we're going to scroll up. We see that same amount here. And we should be back in balance down here. Looks good. No, uh, n nothing happened to net income note from this, even though we're getting money because we already recorded the revenue at the point in time that we issued the invoice. Let's take a look at the financials. So I'm going to say we did something to cash. So we'll see what that does over there. We did something to the receivables. We did something to undeposited funds. So we'll take a look at those accounts. Scroll into the right to see those accounts on the financial statements. Note the financial statements being generated automatically. So we have the cash, accounts receivable updated, undeposited funds should probably be in cash, but in essence it's around zero at this point, except for rounding. And there's the 239, 246, which matches 239, 246. No impact on net income from this transaction, leaving us with the same balance of 725. 
that 725 found on the statement of owner's equity to help calculate the end owner's equity of 151.122. That same 151.122 is also, of course, on the balance sheet here.